What's going on guys and welcome to another Crack a Pack episode. Today we are opening up a pack of 8th edition. Uh, one of my favorite packs to open, funny enough. I don't know why, but I kind of like white bordered cards. And so opening up 8th edition is just really, really fun. Uh, I know that's not a very popular opinion, but it is mine. Uh, so I'm stoked to open this. Hopefully you guys are too. Of course we're going to look at this from a limited environment. So we'll do the best we can uh, to pick our pack one, pick one if we were drafting. Uh, and I will say I didn't draft this set, but because it's a core set It's usually a little bit easier to kind of determine what the best cards are uh, So we'll do the best we can obviously if you feel like I'm wrong, please feel free to let me know in the comment section below But we'll kick it off our first common here is an Antuko disciple It's a 2-2 for three and a green and you can pay a green and tap it and target creature gets plus two plus two until end of turn uh, This is okay it's not amazing by any means, but it's pretty good four drop for just a green kind of filler card. Uh, again, not amazing, but you are able to pump up creatures, which can be useful for certain decks, uh, especially as sort of uh, on battle or on field, excuse me, combat tricks. So I'm not opposed to this card, but I don't really love it either. Uh, Ravenous Rats is a 1-1 one, one for one and a black. When it comes into play, target opponent discards a card from his or her hand. This is much more my style of card, where it's a little bit uh, controlly, a little bit more just like strip apart the opponent's resources kind of a thing. Uh, I do like this card in draft. I think it's perfectly fine. Uh, and so for me, uh, out of these two, I would rather have the rats, honestly. Uh, Glory Seeker is a one, uh, excuse me, is a two, two for one and a white uh, vanilla creature. It's just a bear for white. I'm not a fan of this card. Generally speaking, bears aren't amazing, but it is a core set, so you can kind of get away with it. Um, other than that, there's really not much to say about this card. It's just kind of okay. Uh, Shock Troops, three and a red for a 2-2. Uh, you can sacrifice it and it deals two damage to target creature or player. This is probably the best card so far, though I still kind of like the rats. Uh, this is not, again, it's not amazing. It's a 2-2 two -two for four, which isn't great, but it does shock. Uh, so it's going to be sort of a removal spell. You can do this as soon as it enters play. Uh, so you can deal with some other creature if need be. So I do kind of like this card. Uh, I'm going to keep it here for now. Uh, inspiration, three and a blue for an instant. Target player draws two cards. This is sort of like a really, uh, a more expensive divination. Uh, and it's perfectly fine for a core set. Again, pretty straightforward cards most of the time. I don't mind this, uh, but it is a little expensive. I'd prefer not to have this uh, as a first pick. So not super excited. Giant Growth and Instant for one green, very classic card. Target creature gets plus three, plus three until end of turn. Pretty straightforward, but a very powerful card. Uh, one that is, as far as combat tricks go, is absolutely excellent. Definitely a card I would want in a green deck if I was just kind of trying to be as aggressive as possible. Uh, I prefer some of the creatures that we have already over this, but if I was in green, I would definitely go for that. Uh, regeneration. One and a green for an enchant creature. You can pay a green and regenerate enchanted creature. Pretty straightforward card. Not a huge fan of this, unfortunately. Uh, enchanted creatures in general, I've talked about many times. I'm not a huge fan of them. Uh, on top of that, this one really doesn't do that much. Uh, yeah, it regenerates the enchanted creature, which makes it a little bit harder to kill, I guess. But then you have to leave mana open for it, and it's just, it's not a great time. So not a huge fan of that card. Uh, Sneaky Homunculus is a 1-1 one, one for 1 and a blue. It can't block or be blocked by creatures with power 2 or greater. So it's basically just super evasive, uh, but it is still a 1-1, one, one, so I'm not really a fan of it. Doesn't really do that much, unfortunately. The, the idea being that you could potentially kind of buff this guy up uh, with either some combat tricks like Giant Growth if you splash some green, or some enchant creatures that are going to kind of stick around for a while. Uh, but this does just get easily removed by any piece of removal, and so you're kind of setting yourself up for failure, I think, at those uh, with those kind of strategies, generally speaking. Uh, so I'm not a huge fan of this card. Not my uh, favorite by any means. Uh, Tremor is a sorcery for one red, and it deals one damage to each creature without flying. Uh, this is not a bad card. It's really good as sideboard, I would say. Uh, because you're going to run into decks that maybe have a lot of kind of like one mana elves, things like that, that you want to be able to deal with really quickly. And Tremor is the best card to do that. Uh, for one mana, even if you only get one creature with it, it's worth it. Uh, but if you can get multiple, obviously that's more than awesome. That's really, really good, actually. So especially for only one mana. So I do like this card, but it's more, uh, I would say a little bit more sideboard. You could mainboard it, don't get me wrong, uh, if you really needed a playable, but... I preferred this as a sideboard card because you're not always going to have targets for it. 
Uh, Tundra Wolves is a 1-1 for 1 white with first strike. Now this seems like a deceptively simple card, and it is pretty simple, but it is actually quite good. 1-1 uh, one, one for 1 is on par, but giving it first strike means it's going to be able to deal with other 1-1s one, very, very well. Uh, or really anything with one toughness, which I'm sure there are multiple uh, kind of other cards with that. So I do like this card, not more than the other two cards that we have. I think right now Shock Troops is honestly in the lead. Uh, I just think it's a little bit more powerful as it is basically a removal spell. Uh, but I do like Tundra Wolves for sure. Uh, our first uncommon is Lesser Gargadon. It's a 6-4 for 2 and 2 red, which seems great, uh, but whenever it attacks or it blocks, you do have to sacrifice a land. Uh, that could be not that big of a drawback, to be honest. It also could be a very huge drawback. So I'm going to keep this here for now, but I don't really know that I like that quite as much. Uh, Elvish Scrapper is a 1-1 one, one for 1 green, uh, and you can pay a green and tap it and sacrifice it to destroy target artifact. This is much more of a sideboard card as well, uh, sim similar to the Trimmer. You're not always going to have targets for it. Uh, not all decks are going to be running some artifacts for you, but if you do see an artifact, this is the kind of card that you want to be able to bring in just to deal with that. So I do like this card, but again, mostly a sideboard. Uh, Sanctimony is one and a white for an enchantment. Whenever an opponent taps a mountain for mana, you gain one life. This is like the quintessential sideboard card uh, against a mono red deck or something along those lines. Uh, this is the exact card you want against somebody playing red, but obviously not every deck is going to run red. Uh, so this is sideboard for sure, but it's very, very powerful as a sideboard card. So uh, definitely would want that in a white deck. Uh, we have our land and then our rare Sage of Latinem. Uh, one, a uh, one, two, excuse me, for one and a blue. You can tap it and sacrifice an artifact to draw a card. Very underwhelming rare, unfortunately, just not very powerful. So for me, it's between the Lesser Gargadon and the Shock Troops. <coughs> excuse me. Uh, and I do think the Shock Troops is a little bit of a safer pick. The Lesser Gargadon is huge, so it may be that this is just clearly the best pick. Uh, but I might be wrong on that. I don't like that you have to sacrifice a land just to attack or block, but you are a red deck, you're going to be aggressive. So closing out the game with this guy does seem pretty good. So honestly, I think I'm going to pick the Lesser Gargadon, but I might be wrong on that. Feel free to let me know in the comment section below. Uh, if you did enjoy this video, though, of course, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to uh, subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. I will see you guys in the next Crack-A-Pack episode.